Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to get display out of USB Type-C on basically any Android phone or tablet. You will have to purchase some extra hardware, but it comes out to around $30 if you pick it up used on eBay. I'll leave links in the description. And the phone we have right now is the Poco F3, one of my favorite little gaming phones powered by the Snapdragon 870. It's a great little device, but unfortunately, it doesn't have any display over USB Type-C. You could always cast your device if you wanted to, but I always run into a lot of lag, and gaming while casting really never worked out, at least in my experience. Personally, I'd rather go wired with it so I don't have any kind of input latency, and with this method here, we can totally mirror the screen to a bigger display. It outputs 1080p resolution, and as you can see, the home screens on these devices really don't rotate. You can always install a third-party app, and we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. But if I go in here to Google Play, you can see my screen rotates on the screen we have attached to this device. So anything that works in landscape mode will show up in landscape mode on the connected display. Now there are a couple downsides to this method. As you can see, we do have a black bar on the top and bottom, and it really comes down to the screen's resolution on the phone I'm using. This can be fixed if your phone's rooted. You can always install a resolution changer, and you can fill the full screen, but the way it's set up kind of out of the box, we will get those black bars. Most devices nowadays don't have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so you kind of have to deal with it, but we have a much bigger display over here. And personally, I think it looks really good. It does work out really well for emulation, but the next downside might be a deal breaker for a lot of people. When you're connected to the DisplayLink adapter, your phone will not charge over USB. Now, if you do have wireless charging built in, you can always set it on a wireless charging pad. But unfortunately, with these cheaper adapters, it just doesn't charge over USB at the same time. The adapter I'm using here is a Targus 3.0 DisplayLink adapter. It's definitely a bit bulky, but it was cheap on eBay. It was only $27 shipped to the door. They do make newer DisplayLink adapters, which are a lot more streamlined, but they can get on up there to around $200. Right now, you can actually find these Targus 3.0 DisplayLink adapters for around $15 to $20 on eBay. And we do have I.O. on here that'll work with our device. We've got audio in, audio out. USB 3.0, we've got our display in, DVI, HDMI, Ethernet, and three USB 2.0 ports. So you can actually plug in storage devices, mice, controllers, basically anything that works with your Android device over USB will work through this adapter. So the cable that's included with this is actually meant to plug into a USB port on a PC. One side's USB-B, one side's USB-A, and we need it to go to USB Type-C, so I just picked up a cheap adapter on Amazon, and it worked out just fine. So we've got the USB-B that's going to plug right into the adapter, and now the USB-C is going to plug into our device. Now, in order to get this all to work, we do need to install the DisplayLink Presenter app. You can download it from Google Play, or you can head directly over to their website. Here's the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Unfortunately, they don't add display over USB Type-C. I was hoping that this one would have it, but we can download the DisplayLink Presenter app directly from the DisplayLink website, or you can get it from Google Play. It's on the store. I'm just gonna download it right here from their website. We'll install it really quick. And if you're downloading it from their website, you might have to allow some permissions, but there we have it. Go ahead and open it up. And now we just need to move over to our display. So I've got everything plugged in. I'll just grab my USB Type-C cable that we set up as USB Type-C. And once you do this for the first time, it'll automatically prompt you every time you plug it in so you don't need to be inside of the app. But as you can see, we now have display over USB using the Pixel 6 Pro. So this method definitely isn't for everybody. I mean, you can always cast your screen if you want to do Netflix or something like that. You really don't have to worry about the input latency that way. But if you've ever tried to run any of your favorite Android games or emulators while you're casting your screen, you know how much input latency you can have. But with this method here, we have very minimal input latency and you can actually game on your phone while it's connected to a bigger display, even using a controller. Next thing I did was test this on some lower end phones or cheaper prepaid phones. This is the Galaxy A32 from Boost Mobile. You can pick this up on sale for $129 and I'm actually a huge fan of it. I've installed the rotation control app and the display link presenter from Google Play. We'll just go ahead and plug this in. It's going to prompt me. Yes, I want this to display over that USB cable. And here we are. So it is working on these lower end phones. 
But uh, like I mentioned, we don't have any kind of rotation on the home screen unless you install an app like this. This is rotation control, free from Google Play, and we can rotate basically everything in Android. That way we can run this on the big screen in landscape mode instead of portrait. And there are third-party launchers out there that make everything look like a desktop, so if you did want to plug in a mouse and keyboard to the dock, it will work with your device. So you could actually set something like this up as a makeshift Android PC. But one launcher I personally like using is the Android TV launcher. I think it works well with a setup like this. This is the free version. You can get it on Google Play. works with a controller or a mouse. And uh, you can totally customize all of these tiles. You can change the background. This is just kind of the stock look. I can get rid of all these apps I don't use on the big screen, but let's go ahead and test out some PSP emulation. So this would be one of my main use case scenarios, emulation on a device that doesn't natively support display over USB Type-C. Now if you've got something like a Galaxy S8 on up to the S22, then you don't need to worry about this kind of adapter. You can just plug in an HDMI adapter to the USB Type-C port and get display to the big screen. It works out really well. But when it comes to these budget devices, they just don't support it. So having something like this might help out in the end if you want to play on the big screen. And display latency is very, very minimal. There is a bit of it here, but uh, not much. I'm actually getting more Bluetooth latency than I am with the display latency. So these games are very, very playable over something like this. If I was to connect this to my home network and cast my screen over, I get so much input latency that I can't even play these games. Press the L button and R button at the same time to crouch. Here's a quick test of Asphalt 9, still using that Xbox controller, connected over Bluetooth, working out just fine. I also want to test uh, Dreamcast, so we'll move over to that next. Over the years, I've tried a lot of different adapters to get this working, and MHL used to be the way to go, but a lot of these devices nowadays don't support MHL anymore. You can also find some casting adapters that do wired casting on Amazon, but I'd say this is the best way that I've found so far. I know the adapter we're using here is a bit bulky, but the reason I chose it is because it's so cheap used on eBay. If you want to pick up a newer adapter, which are a bit smaller, you can always do that, but you're going to spend anywhere from $100 to $200 on something like that. But this works just as well as that adapter would, and it's a fraction of the price. So, you know, if you're interested in doing something like this, I'll leave links to everything I used in this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.